Hello and welcome back here to Gamescom 2013. I'm Corey Dunn. I'm now joined here by Daniel Matros. You know, I've had the, the ability to talk to you there at E3, asking you a lot of great questions, yep. mostly about the spectator mode. First, I want to thank you for all the additions that you've already added into the spectator mode. But also, I want to talk to you really in great deal about competitive gaming and uh, what we can see for the future. How are, how's the insight going into it, uh, looking at all these different types of game modes? Uh, so first, I mean, where do you want to start? There's so many different areas. So, so first off, I want to thank you. Oh, I want you're to thank you for coming such... out to Germany. Well, I appreciate the My voice the is a bit fly right now, but thank you for coming out to Germany. Thank you for making this live stream awesome. Uh, both you and Alex, I, I've been secretly watching when I was in the community <laughs> lounge. I think it's really good. I appreciate it. Thank you that. very, very much. Well, now I'm going to tear yeah. up. I have to put all this makeup it's a back heartwarming on. heartwarming moment. And then also a huge thank you to the team. I mean, look at what, look at our setup here. Everyone from marketing, PR, from uh, our dev teams. Amazing job. It's a great experience being here. We got at least 200 stations set up uh, in total around the Gamescom for BF4, and uh, it's just great to see. Great to see all the fans playing it. So let's go ahead and dive into some of the other game modes. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, domination. Can you yeah. kind of explain exactly how domination works? Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, domination is, uh, sorry, I left my brain at home. <laughs> domination <laughs> is a game that we brought out for Battlefield 3, first of all, for close quarters. And uh, it's, a, it's a tight, fast-paced infantry game mode, uh, quicker than, uh, than Conquest. It reminds you a little bit about Conquest Small. Um, random spawns, unless you spawn in your squad. So it's very important to stay in your squad, keep your squad together and just capture the points. And if you capture two of, the, two of the three flags, you put the enemy on the bleed, and the first team that goes to zero loses. So, But we just didn't want to do that. We've done an additional thing to, to Domination. Okay. Uh, so for Battlefield 3, this is what Domination was. For Battlefield 4, we put in battle, uh, battle pickups. And battle oh, pickups right. are, are weapons that are deliberately overpowered, you place them on the battlefield, and you decide whether you, uh, whether you want to trigger them or not, whether you want to capture them or not. What are the other, some of the other types of battle pickups that we can see? We can see right there on the screen, this is one of which, uh, so one-shot kill. Exactly, so for, for, so for instance, I mean, they're deliberately overpowered, as I said. They're spawned within a set time, so you have to, you know, keep on your toes, you have to catch that point as well. Um, the one uh, we have here on Parasol Storm is called uh, USAS with the frag rounds. And then we also have the M83 sniper. It's a 50 caliber sniper, so it hurts. <laughs> it does it hurt. It really hurts when you get shot. Uh, so you just, you know, it's a new dynamic in the game. And I, I just, I think it's a very good idea. No, I, I think it's, it's, it's awesome, especially the fact is, I mean, the range finder that's attached to it, as yeah. well as the zeroing capabilities, just yeah. narrowing down. I know that we had yeah. uh, one of the players named Stan Press who hopped on here with yeah. the with the with the sniper rifle and yeah. he just went to town. I think he ended up going 25. He got 25 headshots or something like that. We're talking at Pretty long good. distances at like a thousand meters out. Yeah. So these battle pickups, uh, one of the things that I like about it, they're effective, yeah. but they're limited. Yeah, they're very limited. And you have to be on your toes. You have to catch them. You, know, you have to grab them on the ground. And uh, otherwise, the other team will get it and they will have a 50 cal and it hurts. So and also uh, we, we've gotten a lot of feedback regarding competitive gaming in Battlefield and uh, and people have People want to integrate esports in the battlefield, and then just what is esports? No, it's a big, it's a big category of a fluffiness and a nothing. Yeah, it's, you and I. So are, for me, are in so for agreement. me personally, I would call it competitive gaming. And if if you look at esports and competitive gaming in general, anything you play online that has a set winner or a loser, that is a competitive game. Correct. Battlefield 3. Ever since Battlefield 42, we have a set winner or a loser is a competitive game. Now. In that bunch, you mix in, you have uh, spectator mode, you might introduce a demo recorder, you might do this and that in a game mode. That's what kind of evolves the competitive game into something that the public want to play competitively and that it's shown on the big screens and the big arenas and uh, that's competitive gaming for me. That, so that's, that's a good thing is the fact that you, kn you know about competitive gaming. Let's go ahead and uh, go back to what you said to me at E3 that I was you had so much credibility at that point is you actually know the reason why the spectator mode was initiated in the very beginning. Can you explain? Yeah, yeah. yeah so first of all, spectator mode, way back. Way back when? Way now. back not, in the Not days. this spectator mode, but yeah. just in When I was a little Daniel. <laughs> a little. Uh, <laughs> was for anti-cheating. You had it for anti-cheating. I mean, because Twitch 
wasn't around. Nope. You couldn't stream. I mean, uploading well, videos was wasn't difficult. there. Well, not that no, way back when. It was yeah. just internet radio. That's where I came from. So, <laughs> very, <laughs> young, very young, too. Corey. Very young. Uh, <laughs> Little so, Corey. <laughs> so, yeah, it's mostly for anti cheat tool. I mean, look at that spectator modes today, like the one we have here. We built this. First off, big shout out to the team. They're wonderful. They've done an amazing job with this. I'm really happy about it. So what we've done here is we Let's go ahead and hop about, into the game. We can take a look here yeah. at the spectator at the same yeah. time. We thought about what people want to use spectator mode for. So they use it, for instance, for cinematics. This is the first time I've actually shown this area oh, off okay. as well, just cause, because right. I was keeping it competitive or keeping yeah. it just showing gameplay action. Yeah. But this is the, the spectator mode yeah. all the way through. So that's where you customize what you want to see in the spectator mode. So if you want to have the controllers for what cameras you want to take a look at, uh, what free cam you're on right now, if you want to see which people you're spectating on third person and first person, you can do that over there. Um, we also have the scoreboard you can you can include there, or the squad boards that you have on the sides. The squad boards are kills and deaths. Uh, we have squads from nothing to 64 players. Um, you can, if you click on them, you go into their first person view. You can see if they're dead or alive, if they spawned or not. One of the things that's been very beneficial for us here, just showing off uh, Battlefield 4, is the fact that you also see what class they are, so you know yeah. whether or not they're an assault, recon, yeah. support, engineer, yeah. and that's been because great. Battlefield is, you know, we have weapons. It is a weapon-based game, but it's a more of a class-based game. Agreed. Because classes counter each other. So that's, that's what we thought with the spectator mode. Uh, but yeah, we, we've done some improvements. We, we've, uh, we've changed the colors around to make it more noticeable what team you're actually watching. Your squad will always be green. Um, and here you have the squad boards again. Yeah, so again, we'll kind of just kind of show you different types of things for those that are really interested in the overall. So you've got the uh, the selection bar at the top, like we had mentioned there. We'll go ahead and turn that off and off for yeah. our purposes. Uh, then also you can sit here and look at uh, the squad list. If you have, you know, depending on what you like, this is all about your flavor at this yeah. point. You can have it on or off so you can see how they're disappearing yeah. and coming back up, yeah. uh, as well as uh, showing the scoreboard so up at the top. Yeah. So maybe for those that are really graphic intensive, they, they know what they want their graphics yeah. to look like, well, they can, well, you can turn it off. You don't actually have to have it there, so you don't have to worry about and that. Also, there. one really, really cool thing about Spectator this time around is the free cam is really smooth. It so is. you can really capture those cinematic shots. If you want to do panoramic shots, you know, glide around, you can do that if you're a you know, big YouTuber, you want to do that kind of stuff. And then if you press V while you are in this view, everything is turned off. Right, so you didn't have to go through the process that I just did. You didn't have to go through uh, you, and you turn buttons, everything yeah. off. Yeah. And so here, we've got everything on now, yeah. right? So, so uh, yeah, exactly. And so, so let's just go press ahead. V now. And so now we can sit there and say, I press yeah. V, and everything everything's goes gone. Away. Yeah, exactly. Press this V is, again, this is your, and everything's back. This is for all the people. I mean, we know people like to make movies for Battlefield. Ever since I used to make them in Battlefield 2, uh, BF42 was b before my time a little bit when it come, came to that. But look at all the amazing videos that have, that have ever been done for Battlefield. We feel like this is the perfect thing for them. And a really smooth free camera, too. Well, that's one of the great things that I like about it, too. So say we're really into a competitive match. There's a lot of great action going yeah. on. I didn't have my preset camera set up at a yeah. certain location, and I need to get into the action quick, but I want to use a free cam. I can sit here and go from this point to this point really quick by yeah. uh, just oh, as I went to yeah. my extra free yeah. cam. So. so the five free cam setup, I mean. So we can zoom well, around looking the map. At, looking at Spectrum as well, looking at competitive games today, you can, you, you can film a first person game the way you want. You can film it top up so it looks like Command and Conquer, or it can go into first person action or into third person action. So there's multiple ways of broadcasting a match. And in my opinion, it's actually cool that all ma matches are not going to look the same. Because people are going to identify with different camera setups. So I've, asked, I like about it. I've asked you this question before. I'm going to ask you again. You can let me know whether where we stand at this point. How many spectators can we have uh, in one game? Yeah, so we're around four right now. Around four. Around so. four, yeah. And that's including if you have a 64-player server, yeah. Uh, you have two commanders. Yeah. You can also have four additional spectators. Yeah. Okay, just making sure, just yeah. clarify. And they, and they don't take up uh, player slots either. So you have 64 players on the server. Great. I mean, so now let's just, I mean, there's there's a lot of different things uh, that we can look at. Um, again, we'll go ahead and bring everything back up here that we can show. So where are we headed with Battlefield 4 competitively? What are, what are some of the outlooks for the future? There for is Battlefield a lot. 4? So. Um, 
Where are we headed? <laughs> For glorier days. No, uh, Battlefield is headed in a very, very good direction. Um, as I said, I've been around since BF2, BF2 BF1942 and, and that scene. I've always wanted to see competitive, game, competitive gaming in Battlefield. And I have one thing to say to all the competitive teams that are looking to get into Battlefield. It's get ready. That's Just get, get that, ready. That's a good way of saying yeah. it here. Just get ready. Get your teams going. Get your sponsors going. Uh, get the game because we're getting ready for it. What's he? Sneaked in there, didn't he? I just went ahead and took off there. Let's go ahead and uh, hop into a first-person view and kind of talk about it again. Uh, so you have the, the player's perspective. Uh, one of the things that I like about it as well, uh, opposed to whenever you had this, uh, you had the selection bar available, you could see here at the top of your screen who you were following. Yeah. When you turn off the selection bar, I like the fact that immediately we also know who we're still following yeah. by looking in the bottom yeah. right-hand side of your screen. Yeah. Uh, so again, just you can also you can also person. turn off the first person HUD as well in the customized screen. There we go. So now we can see beautiful, a very clean style yeah. to the game here from their yeah. perspective. Uh, we we don't see all of the additional um, identifiers. No, there's no uh, additional HUD there that you'll see in no. third person or 3D spotting as it's been called before. Yeah. So you know, again, just a lot of great things to use and kind of whatever your flavor I mean, is. I mean, to be honest, I mean, we listen to the community a lot and uh, Battlefield 4 is definitely a game that is feature-wise shaped by the community. It's Commander, Battle Log is well integrated in console now, bringing out Spectator, bringing out these dynamic maps. We're totally geared for the future. We're looking really, really good right now. And in my opinion, I'm still a fan. I'm a producer today, but I'm still a fan. And I love playing Battlefield. So let's let's really talk about competitive gaming now. So, how does how do you envision the right number of players to make it that that, that glory, the stage, the big screens, the commentators, yeah. everything? Um, yeah. What is the perfect number base? This is always a question that I have, um, especially for a game like Battlefield. Yeah. You know, what is the right numbers? Is it 8v8? Is it 5v5? So, so in my opinion, so first of all, to make Battlefield competitive, or to make any game competitive, you need to have people who play it, obviously. You right. need a hardcore audience, not just a casual audience. You need people who Hard want to learn more. Hardcore in a terminology of saying yeah. avid gamers, yeah, not, avid not, gamers not, exactly. not hardcore game mode. No, I, no, no. I know that I, I knew that may get mixed up between some, but that's, yeah. that's my, that's, again, yeah. all right, You need sorry. to be a regular gamer. We game regularly. Right. English is not a native language. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so you, you need to game a lot. You know, you need to. These are the people who are most interested in the game, the balance and the weapons, how the how, the, how your movement feels, and so you need that. You need you need a large number of players. Um, you need a feature set that supports broadcasting, where you can broadcast really really well out. Uh, you need game modes that are fun, that are fast paced, where the crowd is going like you know this was the most awesome thing I've seen. You need that kind of stuff where where the multiplayer game will tell the story. Exactly. That's this, the thing this, you need. Yeah. This is where you and I can agree on. The fact is, um, kill, kills are great, highlight reels are great, Yeah. but whenever you're talking about an event, it's about the storyline, yeah. it's about character building, it's about uh, just seeing an epic mo moment yeah. happen, where yeah. you, you have the commentators that explain this what is what could happen, and you're, it builds up that anticipation, and then from there, does it happen or does yeah. it not? Exactly, so going back to the numbers, um, it's looking at the real world, man, IRL, it's difficult for people, for teams to ship 16 people abroad. I'm happy you realize that. That's a lot games. of money, you know. So <laughs> domination is tailored for five versus five and 10 versus 10. It's a very good game mode for that. And we listened to the community. We looked back at Battlefield 42 and all the way up and talked to them. And they said five versus five is the best one for us. And financially, if you want Battlefield to grow as, as a competition, for, you know, if, if I'm a team playing Battlefield, and I want I want the team to go financial. I want to be able to send the team around. I want to be able to be featuring these big arenas. I will put a five versus five team down. Not saying now that Battlefield cannot be played with a higher player count on different servers competitively. You can still do that. You can still play. You can still play on other modes. You can still play Domination with 16, 16 versus 16. Right. That's still fine. Um, but in regards to you know what we've heard from working with big partners, working with uh, advisors and all that stuff, they keep telling us that five versus five is good. So talking to the esports teams as well. So, but yeah, as I said before, you can still play 32 versus 32 
big matches and still have prizes for. That's perfectly fine. Are there other game modes that we can anticipate that are going to be really So we've, uh, got, this, we've got this other little game mode called Diffused. Uh, I can't really say too much about it. Uh, you know I want to just dive down deep into this. Yes, right? it is very interesting. I have a lot of fun playing it and testing it, and I know we're, uh, we're excited to bring it out. That's all I can say. <laughs> Man, give me a moment, because I got to recollect Don't my thoughts up here, again. because I want to tear up. I, I want to dive tear up. Don't down. Tear up. Uh, yeah, any, any of the 5v5s always gets to me. I, I love the storyline. I think it's I think it's a great number, yeah. um, because it, it as a director, I also do directing for yeah. li live uh, large events here, or yeah. li large events in the U.S., not here, <laughs> large yeah. events in the U.S. Um, and so I'm really about character building, talking about a story, so really just kind of building up a player. It's very difficult to kind of build up a player yeah. Yeah. Uh, amongst I, I think one of, sorry, one, of the, one of the good things about Battlefield, going into the you know competitive aspects of it, is that it's not only locked. You can do domination is infantry only, you can still have big clan matches of vehicles. It's very dynamic. You can do whatever you want in a competitive aspect. You're not locked to anything. Spectator mode will be on all game modes. It's not game mode specific. It'll be on all game modes. It supports, you know, one player to 64 players if you want to spectate that. It's all around. All right, so my next question that I have to talk about, this again, I've, now we're starting to get into it deep. Yeah. Uh, I know that a lot of, it, it's always a question that whenever you talk about live events, is yeah. having the capability of, of having lands, uh, yeah. ha having that, that ability. Can you kind of give your perspective on this? Yeah. Yeah. So to having lands and? To having land having land capabilities uh, yeah. with, with BF4. Yeah. So land mode, is, it's a tricky one. We looked at it for a while, and um, you know, releasing server files like that, it, 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 puts, it puts stuff in danger. It's easier to hack the game. It's easier to cheat. Crowd's going wild out there, Corey. That's for you, by the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, with, in today's infrastructure, everything is going cloud. Everything is going cloud these days. And with a good service support there is, with a good you know broadband connections there are, we don't really see it necessary for LAN. Uh, pings are going to be fine. That's what, we, that's what we feel. Well, no, you're, you're right. So in the past, yeah. we needed land. We yeah. had to have land because yeah. the connections yeah, mostly, were there. Mostly for me, when I played on land before, it was because the connections were terrible. Exactly. You yeah. could have a, if you lived in Sweden 10 years ago, you had like a 70, 70 ping to UK. Don't get me started. Now, about now if the you US. live, now I live in Stockholm, I play in Germany, I have a 15 ping. It's nothing, you know? Uh, so that's one of the things. Again, I just wanted to, I wanted to bring that yeah. out. I know people had the questions about yeah. land. I agree with you entirely. Yeah. And that that this is a hardcore, avid, uh, competitive gamer. Yeah. That that's my perspective, and I agree with you yeah. on. You know, we're we're there. Technology is there where we don't have to have this land network. Yeah. Um, we won't have to worry about any players randomly joining into a game. Yeah. Everything's password protected. Just hop into a game. You're yeah. good to go. Yeah. So let's uh, try to think of all the other different things that we can kind of talk about more, you know, more about competitive gaming overall. Though I mean, you've you've taken us in the right direction. I think there's there's really nothing that's kind of gone out of tune that you know that doesn't really scream competitive yeah. gaming. So to sum it up for for the teams who are watching this stream, I know a lot of esports teams are watching this stream. So to sum it up, uh, two competitive game modes, an awesome spectator mode, but not only for you guys, you have to share it with amazing YouTubers who will create amazing videos. Um, and that's pretty much it for the competitive aspect. And as I said, Battlefield is very dynamic when it comes to competitions. You can play competitively on other maps, other player accounts, with vehicles or without vehicles. You decide how you want to play. Yeah, something again for those that are, are broadcasters out there, shoutcasters, uh, wanting to know some of the other capabilities. One of the things that I really like, again, is the tabletop view and being able to maneuver around. One of the great things is, is you can double click on a location. So right here we have the attack boat. We see Bravo 9. You get that picture-in-picture -picture view down to the bottom left-hand side. You can either double-click or hit your first-person view. Yeah. I like to double-click, hopping, hopping directly in there into that first-person view. Yeah. You can see how effective it is. Last thing that I would like to mention about the spectator mode. Well, Bravo 7, 30 and 9. Let's go ahead and hop on board with them and see exactly the reason why. And this is exactly why. Again, you just having these yeah. capabilities, always find the action. I think that's one of the most difficult things. And this is a 16v16 game. We also have Conquest that's happening at the same time yes. here at Gamescom. Yes. And that's also 32 versus 32. So hard to really 
capture every bit of the gameplay. Yeah. And so it allows you to have that overarching, being able to see everything, yeah. and then hop into yeah. that individual gameplay. And I would like to say, this is this is something we, we were taking very, very seriously now. I mean, this competitive aspect of it, listening to players' feedback, and players, you know, people will ask for more features. Uh, we'll see what we do in the future. Um, I say like Los Gustafsson, if you're trying to make everything, you wind up making nothing. You have to put, you can't, you can't distribute all your resources everywhere. You have to put all your eggs in one basket and you work from there. Um, Such a great that's approach. That's one of the biggest lessons I've learned coming to DICE as well. I think, I mean, one of the things though that I love about uh, all of the DICE developers is your passion. Yeah. You have, it's, and each one of you are passionate, not only just about the game, but also in your individual field and what you're really putting into the game. I think that's great. One of the, also the things to know too, is that you're always trying to critique and make it better. I mean, we yeah. every single day, I believe we've seen a new build, different changes to the game every single time that we've come out here every day at Gamescom. I mean, coming out here, I mean, for two purposes. One is to give the crowd here at Gamescom an amazing experience. We want them to walk off and say, man, this game was really good. It, it had things I haven't seen before, like these huge waves you got going on over here. Um, like the dynamic maps we have and, you know, things that just go boom. People like that stuff. Things that just go boom. Explosions, I believe they're called. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like things that just go boom is so much better. We need that, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, one, one is for the experience, you know, to let people play hands-on, to experience it for themselves, not just watch a trailer, but to maybe even reenact some of those moments. Uh, other one is to collect as much feedback as we can, and then we've been walking around and we've been talking to the people who've been playing, uh, talking to guys like you, and you're just collecting feedback on what to do. And um, oh, they're making this way too easy on Bravo 12. Wow, yeah, he fell like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> he's just shooting at whatever he can. It'll I, that's I think his entire squad. Yeah, I think he doesn't know that he's on his team. They've been camping in this building the entire time. I think it's because the bomb spawn, spawns yeah, yeah. pretty nearby and one, one of the points. And yeah. so it spawned here last time. And so he's waiting for the bomb to respawn in this yeah. exact location. Uh, he's firing at his teammates. I don't believe he really... Well, these are not his teammates. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know it was a follow -up. See? Good feedback right there. It's your initial yeah. looking at the screen. And this yeah. is some of the questions that have been out there as well. Yeah. Is And I mean, color, color coding it was one of the things at E3 that we uh, we took seriously. And obviously, coming back here, I directly see now that we need to color code differently now. Yeah, so yeah, that, thing. and that's one of the things that I agree with is that it doesn't need to be your blue and oranges yeah. because that's what we use in yeah. game all the yeah. time. So. It may have some purples yeah. and, and yeah. green. I mean, it's, it's just about switching out. It's about trying different things out, you yeah. know. It's it's trial and error. That's what it is. That's about it is, uh, how, how it is to make make games. In the end of the project, you optimize. You make it better. You polish. And and hopefully, you know, if you're, if you're really on your toes, you deliver a product that is outstanding. Uh, so let's go ahead. And I want to talk about uh, this game mode obliteration for just a moment here too. Uh, so one of the things that, that I noticed immediately is once you plant the bomb at any of the MCOM points, it takes about 10 to 12 seconds for it to explode. Yeah. What was the whole purpose behind that? Why, why would uh, you want to deliver something like that? Um, more gameplay, I guess. I, I haven't worked on obliteration, but from my point of view, it's, uh, it's to maybe diffuse it. Maybe have a team to have the opportunity to diffuse it. Well, so one of the things too, I think it's, uh, and I, this is what I was trying to mention earlier, is the watching the way that players play the game. If if the bomb plants, so 12, 10 to 12 seconds is pretty quick, yeah. uh, especially on these on these larger maps, yeah. these uh, 16 v 16. Um, one of the things that uh, that I was kind of getting to is if you make the bomb timer longer, so say 20 seconds. Yeah. That allows teams to rotate and clash down onto that, that end yeah. comp point and way too again, quickly. Then again, obliteration, it's, it's, it's a challenge enough to go and plant. It's not very easy. It gets very chaotic. It's a challenge enough to go and plant. Well, that bomb indicator is with you the entire time. Yeah. It never Flashing leaves red. It's real time, and that yeah. jug is like this big. Yeah. And so, you know, one of the things is, like, you know, Battlefield 4, do you even lift? Yeah, I mean, you can pick up those bombs and run around like that. Yeah. yeah. He lifts very well. <laughs> he yeah. does pretty well. Uh, so I, I think that's what I that yeah. that's basically answers a lot of the great questions yeah. that I have for you. Is there anything else that you really want to get out there to the community? 
thank you for all your feedback. Thank you for playing. Uh, thank you for watching this. Thank you for uh, get, sending us all your ideas. If you have more ideas, send them into the Battle Log Forum. We'll take a look. Um, thank you very much for watching. I got one last thing for you, Corey. All right, I'm ready. I got for a it. joke for you. Oh no! You ready for this? I, I, I've heard you and your jokes in the in the dice office. So let's let's yeah. hear this one. Right, so what happens if you mix a, a, a dog and a telephone? Mixing a dog and a telephone? I don't know. You get a golden receiver. Oh my god. Is that not funny? <laughs> did you did you read that on a popsicle stick? No, I actually Google it. You I, go, I Google it. funny jokes and then I tweet them. I th it's not, it's not on, under a bottle cap or anything like that? No. Oh man. What, <laughs> we need to get you some popsicle sticks so you can get some better jokes. <laughs> they're not, they're not bad, huh? <laughs> All right. Danny Matros, yeah. thank you for hopping on here, showing much. us thank the spectator you. mode, talking about competitive gaming. Uh, and there you go. I mean, for those uh, those are that are avid gamers, hardcore gamers, if you will, they're thinking about it. They're paying attention yeah. there. So yeah, for Battle we have four teams. Get ready. Get very ready. Be ready. We'll be back after yeah. the break.